Intel's eighth generation of desktop CPUs is the company's first opportunity to respond to AMD's Ryzen CPUs that truly changed the PC hardware market in March of this year. So with the Core i7-8700K, Intel bumped up the core and thread count for the first time in the history of the high-end i7 processors. But is it the jump we're hoping for from Intel? Our results seem to say so. The 8700K retails for $360 US dollars, which is the highest launch price for a flagship i7, but not by much. The previous 7700K goes for around $340. The slight price bump is justified through the higher core and thread count. Instead of the multi-threading quad-core design that's been in place since 2008 on the first-gen i7s, we now have multi-threading six-core configuration based on the new Coffee Lake architecture. In this regard alone, we're getting more performance per dollar. There's another catch to the price though. All eighth-gen Coffee Lake CPUs require motherboards with a Z370 chipset. All past motherboards, including ones with the Z270 chipset that released earlier this year, are not compatible with the new CPUs, even though they all use the same LGA1151 socket type. That means another 100 to 150 bucks. But if you're on a much older platform and looking to upgrade, that's something you've already considered. As for technical details, the 8700K sports a base clock speed of 3.7 GHz across all cores and can automatically boost one core to 4.7 GHz or two cores to 4.6 GHz. Before we get into benchmark results, let's establish our methodology. We use the Asus Maximus X Hero Z370 motherboard to build our system. And since we want to keep things as consistent as possible with our past tests, we use the same or similar specs. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM from HyperX, a Samsung 850 Pro SSD, NZXT's Kraken X62 water cooler, and a reference GTX 980 video card, which can still hold its own in games. We're going to be comparing the i7-8700K directly to three other CPUs. Its predecessor that came out earlier this year, the i7-7700K, AMD's similarly priced Ryzen 7 1700X, which can range between $300 to $400, but rocks 8 cores and 16 threads, and AMD's 6-core 12-thread equivalent in the Ryzen 5 1600X that's much cheaper, ranging from $220 to $250. Now we have a lineup of CPU-focused tests that simulate video and image rendering and some gaming benchmarks to get an idea of how powerful this new CPU is. So let's get into some numbers. Cinebench R15 is a common CPU benchmark to indicate how well your system handles 3D animation and image rendering. It's well known for stressing multiple CPU cores, and it shows in the results. The 8700K smashes on the 7700K. It also beats out AMD's cheaper 6-core 1600X, and it's neck and neck with the Ryzen 7 1700X. This is an example of more cores at work, but also the higher efficiency of Coffee Lake. Our other CPU-centric tests, X264, Pavre, Blender, and Geekbench, all follow the same trend shown in Cinebench. But let's move to a few simulations of more common tasks. PC Mark 8 is an extensive multi-stage simulation of real-world tasks like web browsing, photo editing, and video conferencing. It simply spits out a score at the end, and the 8700K came out on top by a wide margin. The three other CPUs were fairly close to each other, but the 1700X's distant second place shows the efficiency of Intel's Coffee Lake CPU. 3D Mark 11 closely resembles video game performance since it goes through several stages of rendering 3D graphics. First, we plucked out the physics score, which is heavily dependent on CPU calculations, and the 8700K takes the cake by a significant margin. Now, the overall score is a big picture result. Here, we see more parity once we factor in GPU performance. The 8700K still comes out on top, but the 7700K and the 1700X systems aren't too far behind. A six minute run through with Star Swarm throws multiple units and explosions on screen to stress test your system. We ran it twice, once with low settings and once with high settings at 1080p. And it appears that it doesn't utilize anything beyond four cores. The higher clock 7700K came out on top in both tests. Bioshock Infinite's benchmark is a bit of an anomaly in that the 7700K significantly outpaces all the other CPUs in our 1080p tests with low settings. When we bump up the settings to maximum, the gap closes, but the 6 and 8 core CPUs still fall behind the quad core 7700K. Deus Ex Mankind Divided is one of the more demanding games on your hardware. We ran it at 1080p with a high graphics preset for a more realistic scenario. And while we see the 8700K ahead, it's not statistically significant. The game and its benchmark are more GPU bound, and our GTX 980 is the bigger factor when it comes to performance. 
To prove the GPU-bound nature of games at 1080p with high settings, Ghost Recon Wildlands' benchmark gave us similar results. It spits out real-time readings of GPU and CPU usage, and while the GPU was constantly working at 99%, the CPU workloads ranged from 25 to 40%. But the 8700K seems to be slightly more efficient. Judging from our results with the i7-8700K, we have a meaningful change from what we come to expect from Intel. Its flagship CPU gets a bump in core and thread count, and we have the numbers to prove it, especially in CPU-heavy tasks. However, there isn't much to point to when it comes to performance in gaming, since games are heavily reliant on the GPU and aren't geared to take advantage of more than four CPU cores quite yet. If you want a closer look at the Core i7-8700K, check out the written review on GameSpot.com where we go into more detail about our tests, overclocking temperatures, and all that good stuff. Join the discussion in the comments, and as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.